Okay, guys, just want to go through uh, real briefly the parts I'm going to be using on my HK600. Uh, first off, this canopy. This canopy sucks. Think about a uh, milk jug. That's pretty much what this plastic is, except this is much thinner. So, first thing, canopy's got to go. So, while you're at Hobby City and picking up this helicopter, one thing you can do, they have fiberglass uh, canopies for the 600. Now, I picked this up. This was uh, like $12, something like that. Uh, pretty nice finish. Um, you know, could be better, but it's definitely cool. You know, this would be very visible in the sky, and it looks really cool. Comes with a canopy uh, grommet nuts there, uh, so you're going to have to drill your own holes. But, again, much better than the stock. So, moving on. Alright, uh, next we'll go with the radio system. Now, I'm going to be using my Spectrum DX6i. Uh, I use this for everything. Works great. And with this, I'm going to use a Spectrum AR6200 receiver. It's cool because it's got a little satellite antenna. Alright. Uh, next, we'll go with the, uh, the ESC, the Electronic Speed Controller. Now, this is a speed controller I got. This is a Turnigy 150 amp uh, brushless speed controller. This does not contain a BEC, so you will have to buy a separate BEC. Uh, this thing was a great price, that's why I bought it. And it is huge. Very, very big. But, you know, at least I'll never have to worry about overloading it. So, this is limited to six cell batteries. So, uh, just be aware of that. Uh, pretty nice. And to program this, I went ahead and bought a program box for it. And this is the Hobby Wing program box, because that's pretty much what this is. It's the same thing as the Hobby Wing. Uh, Hobby City didn't have the program box in stock, so I went ahead and picked this up at Heli Direct. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but it's cool because it comes with a little USB cable to update firmware on there. Um, next, because, like I said, this doesn't contain a BEC, so I had to buy a BEC. Now, the BEC I bought, this is a Turnigy 7.5 amp BEC, um, and it's cool because it's got 5 volt and 6 volt output, and it also comes down, comes with a step down regulator. So, what you can do is you can run this at 6 volt, and that's going to make your servos operate just a little bit quicker. Um, but when you go back to your tail servo, you don't uh, you don't want to run it at 6 volts a lot of times. So you need to step it down to 5 volts, and that's what this wire does. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now one thing, I'm going to show you here. All right. In here on the instructions, you'll see the little wiring diagram. That's backwards. That's the input. That's the output. It even says it right here on the back of the uh, BEC. So just, you know, something funny I found. Right. keep going on now to power this helicopter I'm going to be running mine on a 6 cell battery pack you can set these things to run on 6 cell, 8 cell, 10 cell, 12 cell like I said, I'm going to be running 6 cells uh, for this one and I'm actually going to be running 2 uh, 2600 milliamp batteries so I'll have like uh, 5200 milliamps and uh, you see here it's going to make for a very big battery pack uh, I am going to be buying a new battery pack that's just one single battery pack. Um, but just for the beginning, I'm going to be using these because I use them in some of my other helicopters. Next to the motor. <clears throat> now, this motor, this is one of the Hobby City motors. Um, they're out of stock of them right now. They don't really have the best reviews, but, you know, it was cheap. I went ahead and picked it up anyways when they were in stock. Uh, mine did come with a fan, by the way. But, uh, like I said, yeah. You know, not the best reviews. Um, they're not in stock, so, you know, I wouldn't worry about trying to order one and wait for them. The, uh, Hobby City supposedly got some new motors coming out, and, uh, you know, when they come out, I'll let you know if you don't see them before me. Uh, so my cyclic servos, uh, I'm going to be using some Futaba 9252 digital servos. Uh, so I got these from my good friend Lloyd, Black Rain, on my forums. Um, so he hooked me up with these servos, so I'm going to be using these. Uh, Full-size servos. You need full-size servos for this kit. And for the tail, um, uh, well, for the gyro, I'm going to be using a Futaba GY401. And I will be using a Futaba 9254 tail servo. So that's going to match up pretty good. 
Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention here with this motor, um, with this particular motor and the 6L battery setup, I'm going with a 14 tooth pinion and this will give me about the head speed that I want. Um, and I had to pick these up at Heli Direct. So, <clears throat> moving on, let's see, the blades. Now, again, this thing, the uh, HK600 doesn't come with blades, so you're gonna have to buy these. Now, at Hobby City, they have these TIG 600 millimeter uh, Z-Weave carbon fiber blades. These things are pretty cool. I don't know if you can really see the weave in here. It's a nice Z-Weave. Um, really nice. Uh, these are really good price, too. So I picked up these. Uh, and then just a couple other things when I was at Heli Direct. I had to get some Dean's connectors for my speed controller. Because the speed controller doesn't come with any connectors. And the motors for the connectors actually come with the uh, motor. So that's where I lucked out on that. Um, and, oh, yeah, this thing. This is a swash plate leveling tool. What this does is I'm going to be sliding this down over the main shaft, and I'm going to use this to level the swash plate. And I'll show you guys how to use this a little bit later. Um, a lot of times, you know, like with my smaller helicopters, you know, I'll tell you, you can just eyeball to make sure your swash plate's level. On the bigger helicopters, you know, these tools are available. You might as well use them. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier, but you really need to make sure these big helicopters are spot on before you go fly them. These things can be very dangerous so um yeah that is all the uh equipment that i'm using and uh now just a couple more things about the helicopter kit and then i'll get going with putting all this stuff on okay uh because this is such a big helicopter kit um and uh it's a clone so you always have problems with clones um there's always gonna be little things you're gonna have to work through uh with the clone something this size you really have to pay attention to things um, now my build video I just kind of went through skipped through and built the helicopter I did go through and do all my checks but uh, because of time constraints I didn't show you all of that um, but I do I really want to stress again make sure you go through the kit um, some of the problems that other people have reported uh, real quickly um, the fly bar cage here and I have this problem the uh, rods going across are too short so when I tighten this down all the way it'll actually bend these side pieces and then it barely moves so you need some shims in there um, one of the other problems the the holes being drilled through the blade grips uh, on mine one of them you know it's not drilled right uh, a lot of times when you get these things the bearings um, you're supposed to have two washers you know a washer with a big uh, hole and a washer with a small hole on each side, a lot of times you'll get these, you'll have the washers with both big holes on one side and the washers with uh, both big or small holes on the other side, and it's not supposed to be like that. A um, couple other things people have said, uh, well, we all know the pins for the head here, these pins right there, um, those are too short, uh, that's another problem. Um, the swash plate, uh, some people, their swash plate has a lot of slop in it, uh, mine doesn't. Um, some people have uh, been uh, saying that their gears aren't perfectly round, um, and also that the uh, oh, the one-way bearing there isn't working properly. Uh, I lucked out; mine worked fine. Uh, now, in here, there's a little plastic gear there. The shaft that that sits on drives the tail belt. Well, that gear is reported to come off very easily, so you are going to want to go ahead and get a <clears throat> an aligned T-Rex. Uh, shaft there and gear so that way you don't have that problem because uh, you do not want that gear to strip out in flight uh, let's see a couple other problems are just back here in the tail uh, a couple people have had to use shims uh, for the tail box case here I got lucky mine didn't need that um, I do have the binding in the pitch slider uh, so that may be something you have and also there's been uh, some people that have uh, had problems with these uh, tail grips being drilled improperly. So, uh, just some of the problems that you should be on the lookout for uh, when you get yours. And uh, so, again, uh, that was just uh, some brief things about it. And next is on to installing electronics.